Hello and good day. This is Corey from the Box Scholar YouTube channel. I thank you for joining me today. Uh, Halloween is right around the corner. Halloween is just 10 days from uh, me making this video. And uh, I didn't know what I was gonna, going to do for a while, so but I just decided this morning, hey, I'll just do a little talk on the Monster Tainer, which I arranged for piano last year at this time. And I sold a lot of copies. It was very popular. And below this video, you can get 50% off for 10 days up to uh, October 31st. I think it ends like midnight, October 31st. First, before talking, I'm just going to play first page here. Think of that. spare you the repeat there but you can hear that uh, it sounds a little creepy doesn't it? it sounds great for Halloween so the original let me just take you through the steps uh, just a few things that I did to make it sound like that uh, if you uh, hopefully you know something about key signatures and that sort of thing so this uh, originally is in the key of C major C major does not have any sharp or flats so I'm sure you've heard that a million times. All of that introduction that I just played is on the white keys, except for except that little riff that goes down like that. So it's all on the white keys, it's all in C major, no sharps, no flats. Um, although there are a few sharps in the piece as, as we go along. So in Creating the Monster Tainer, by the way, the, the subtitle is a ghoulish two-step. Also, notice my tempo word here that I say, morbidoso, <laughs> in a morbid fashion, uh, at about 54. 54, by the way, is a great speed for this. So if you put it on 54 beats per minute, So, you know that's that is a great speed for this so see if you can play it at 54 that's the performance speed for it anyway so you take Joplin's original and basically what I did was I wrote I took I already had the entertainer written out on my software I used Sibelius I just you know used uh, copied it for, for another file and then I went and I just simply put in three flats, the B, E, A, A flat, three flats, if you know your key signatures, is the key signature for C minor, C minor. So, you know, I can play like the melodic minor scale or, or the harmonic minor scale. Those are the ones that are used the most. Uh, melodic minor actually is probably used the most, and then harmonic minor after that. So anyway, uh, what you need to do is, or, or what I did when I transcribed this or arranged it, is I just simply changed the key signature, and then I had to go and I, I had to tweak a lot of notes because it, just, it doesn't do it all by itself. So for example, to I have to natural the B so B's are usually flatted but I have to put a natural there because 
because still that implies the G, a G major chord, which is the dominant of C. So the dominant of G major works for either C major or C minor. So it has that creepy sound. And also what I did was I harmonized it, that uh, Joplin's original is in parallel octaves because they're eight notes apart. It's the same note in both hands. Well, what I did here is I, I harmonized it at a sixth actually a sixth and then an octave. So they're, they're parallel sixths. And then I had the, I had a little counterpoint there. So I had to change that too. Um, otherwise, it, if you just take it literally, from Joplin, I don't know, it just doesn't sound as good. So there is some tweaking you have to do if you turn it into minor. It doesn't do it all by itself, uh, but you have to do that. But there's no software that turns everything into minor. You, you, you'll you have to do um, some of the work yourself. So anyway, so here we have, we're going into the main theme. Now the original goes, D, D sharp, E. But I do, I go like this. flat there because that's a diminished seventh chord and it has to have that flat there so otherwise it would sound like that so if you didn't change the G to a G flat it would sound like this uh, I'll play it it would sound too plain it's really plain sounding. We're in minor, so you can do some really interesting things in minor modes by simply, uh, what, what you do is minor chords, uh, what usually is a minor chord in a major piece key can usually just becomes a diminished chord because diminished is one less than minor. <laughs> so if, so in other words, in the original, that that's a minor chord. Ah. You have that nice uh, dissonance there. these chords here. If, if you uh, are good at music theory, uh, you will probably know what these are. So here we have just C minor here. That's a C minor with sort of a just a B flat passing tone in the left hand. Then you're going down to A natural here in the left hand. And then this, that chord there, that's a di diminished seventh chord, right there, it's a uh, F 
sharp diminished seven. Then this is my favorite chord of all here. I love that chord. So you have A flat, C natural, and an F sharp. Yeah, those are the only harmonic tones there. Do you know what chord that is? Well, it sounds like it sounds like it's a seventh chord with the fifth missing. So it sounds like it's an A flat seven with without a fifth in it, right? An A flat dominant seven. Well, this chord really isn't because it's the way it's spelled. So those are six apart from each other. So it's a sixth. It's called an augmented sixth because the distance between A flat to F sharp technically in music theory is an augmented sixth. So this is one of those augmented sixth chords that if you've ever taken uh, advanced theory in, in college, if you learned uh, the augmented six chords, there's three of them. There's the Italian sixth, German sixth, and French sixth. And they're all slightly different. This one here is the Italian sixth because the Italian sixth is the one that doesn't have, the, it's lacking the fifth in there. So, so if it had an E flat, it would be a German six. Um, yeah, so I don't see any E flat anywhere. But why, why is that important? Why, why am I dwelling on this chord? Because uh, in, it works especially well in minor keys, these uh, augmented six chords. So let me play the left hand progression here, C minor. Italian six going to a C minor but in second inversion that's called a cadential six four chord in music theory language a cadential six four and then it goes to a five and then a one C minor so uh, that was just a little taste of the monster tainer and there's a lot more to be discovered here. If you uh, uh, purchase this and learn it, you can also, uh, you can, of course, you need to go and listen to my video of this from last year, which I made. I was going to record it again, but I thought, oh, I've recorded it already. So I'm just going to talk a little about it here. And uh, if you're interested, you can go and listen to my video. Actually, the link is below this video for my other video, my performance video of this. And I hope you enjoy this really scary and spooky music for this Halloween season. Until we meet again, thank you.